Hi everybody. In this particular video, we'll be studying about type conversion in C programming language. Throughout the video, do follow the mouse pointer and I suggest that you copy the examples and the exercises which I'll be taking here. Type conversion in C language is broadly divided into two categories. The first category is called automatic type conversion. Now what exactly is this automatic type conversion? So to understand this, have a look at this particular declaration where A is an integer with value 5 and X is a float with value 6.7. <clears throat> now, let's say I write something like A plus X. So A plus X is equal to 5 plus 6.7. Now what happens is, before adding 5 with 6.7, the compiler will automatically convert 5 to 5.0. So what the compiler does over here is it converts a lower data type to the higher data type. Do not forget that the range of integer is lower than the range of float and that is why the integer was automatically converted to float and only now the addition will take place. So obviously the answer is 11.7. So this procedure is called automatic type conversion. Now the question in somebody's mind could be why it is called automatic type conversion. So it is called type conversion because over here the data type of A was converted from into float. And we use the word automatic because this type conversion was automatically done by the compiler. It was not done by the programmer. Keep in mind that the automatic type conversion is temporary in nature. So what that means is that after the work of addition is over, after everything is over, A gets reverted to data type int. Its conversion to float was not permanent. So that was automatic type conversion. Now let's go to another important topic called force type conversion or more popularly it is called type casting. <clears throat> to understand this, take example of a float variable f with value 7.5. Now can you tell me what will be the value of f modulus 5? Will it be 2.5 or will it be 2? The answer is that if you do f modulus 5 this expression is invalid. Do you know the reason why? The reason is that you cannot perform modulus on float. You can perform modulus only on integers and characters. So that's why if you write something like f modulus 5, the compiler will report an error. So now the question is, what can be done over here? That means if somebody wants to do the operation f modulus 5, what should be done? The answer is that now we should do force type conversion. Force type conversion means now we, that means the programmer, will forcibly convert the data type. So let's see how that will be done. So we'll do two examples in which this is the first one, f is equal to 7.5. You already know that f modulus 5 will report an error. So instead of writing f modulus 5, we'll write something like this. Over here, the data type int, which we have written in parenthesis, is sometimes called type operator or cast operator, and the procedure is now called type casting. So now let's substitute f. So the next step is this. Now see how simple it is. What will be the integer part of 7.5? Obviously, it will be 7. So 7 modulus 5 will now give you 2. And now everything works correctly. So in this particular statement, we are doing the work of type casting or force type conversion, which means we are forcibly converting the data type of f from float to int. Let's take one more example in which int i is equal to 7, float f is equal to 6.5. And let's say I write this. Come on, take a few seconds and tell me what will be the answer. <clears throat> so, you must have realized that this 2 will be invalid. Now, let's understand why it will be invalid. 
See, if you do i plus f, then i is an integer and f is a float. So i plus f will give you a float, which means that a data type of this parenthesis will be float. So float modulus 4 will again give you an error. Now, if you want to make this valid, how will you write this expression? So all you need to do is introduce the operator again, the type operator, the cast operator again. So I write int i plus f modulus 4. So let's do the substitution. So when you substitute, you get this. 7 plus 6.5 will be done first. So it will be this. Now, what is integer part of 13.5? Obviously 13. So it is 13 modulus 4, which is equal to 1. Now, there is something very important which you need to understand over here. Let's talk about this example number 1. Tell me guys one thing, in example number 1, what is the data type of f after the entire operation is over? What I mean is, after you get the result 2, after everything is over, what do you think is the data type of f? Is it int according to you or is it float? The answer is, it will be float. So once again, what you need to understand is, just like automatic type conversion, even force type conversion is temporary in nature. Okay. Now, let's do one very important exercise question which, where we'll study some rules about automatic type conversion and force type conversion. So, this is the exercise question. Now, what this question says is, a C program contains the following declarations. So, here there are some declarations, i is of data type int, l long, s short, c char, f float, d double and x is long double. Now read and understand the question carefully. What it says is, determine the data type of the result of each of the following operations and you will get operations like these. What you need to understand over here is, the question is not asking us to find a value of the expression. It is asking us to find out the data type of the expression f plus d. Okay. So now let's understand what will be the data type of f plus d. So f is of data type float. d is of data type double. Let's take one more expression. Okay. Where x is long double and d is double. Now to find out the answer over here, you need to understand rule number one of type conversion. So what exactly is this rule number one? Okay. So rule number one says, before I tell you the rule number one, I want to tell you one thing over here. Now we are going to study four rules over here. In these rules, whenever I say floating point types, floating point types will include float, double and long double. Whenever I say int or integer, that will actually include int, short int and long int. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's start. Now, if you are my students, you don't need to copy these rules. They are there in your printed notes and other uh, people, you can just note down these rules. So what rule number one says, it says, if both operands are floating point types, then the result of the sorry, then the data type of the result will be same as that operand which has a higher range. I repeat the rule for you. If both the operands are floating point types, then the data type of the result will be same as that operand which has a higher range. Now what that means is, let's see, f plus d. So over here, tell me which one has a higher range obviously d which is of data type double so the answer over here will be what will be the answer well it's not d in your answer you should write double okay now similarly you have x plus d x is long double d is double which one has a higher range obviously long double so the answer is long double when you write the answer over here by mistake don't write don't write x instead of long double don't write d instead of double Okay, so now let's move on to next two expressions to understand rule number two. You have expression number three and four and both are for rule number two. 
Now what is rule number two? So rule number two says, if one operand is a floating point type and the other is a char or int, then the result is of data type same as the floating point type. Once again, let me remind you that when I say floating point type, it means float double long double. When I say int, it could be int, short int, long int. So once again, I'll tell you the rule. <clears throat> if one operand is a floating point type and the other is a char or int, then the data type of the result is same as that operand, which is the floating point type. So very simple. If you do F plus I, okay, the result will be float. If you do D plus L, result will be double. Okay, keep in mind that F and D are floating point types. Okay, I and L are not floating point types. Okay, so one floating point type, another not a floating point type, result will be same as floating point type. I hope that was simple. Now let's go to the next two expressions, L plus C and I plus L. Now, before we go to the rule number three, observe that in expression number five and six, you do not see any floating point types. Okay. So what is rule number three telling you? Okay. Rule number three tells you if neither operand is a floating point type, but one is a long end, then the data type of the result is long end. It is simple. If neither operand is a floating point type, but one is a long end, that the data type of the result is long end. So very simple, L plus C will be long end, which we can also write as long. I plus L will be long end, okay? Finally, let's try and understand number seven and number eight. Now, if you look at expression number seven and eight, you will realize in seven and eight, you will not see any operand of floating point type or even long int. i is integer, i is int, c is char, s is short int, c is char. So now let's understand rule number four. Rule number four says, if neither operand is a floating point type or long int, then the data type of the result is int, no matter what the two operands are. I repeat, if neither operand is floating point type or long int, then the data type of the result is int no matter what the two operands are. So tell me what is i plus c? It is int. Tell me what is s plus c? Well, some students give the wrong answer over here. They say s plus c is short int, but the answer is int. Keep in mind that short int and int are two different data types. The answer over here is int. Now let's do expression number nine and 10. Before going to expression number 9 and 10, what I want to tell you is that in these eight expressions, we did not do any expression which involved force type conversion, type casting. Now 9 and 10 will involve force type conversion or type casting. Okay. Now this is expression number 9 for you in which what we have done is we have type casted D to data type care over here. Please keep one thing in mind that within the parenthesis, we can write any data type. It is not necessary that we should write only int or float. You can write any data type. Once again, whatever you see inside the parenthesis is called type operator or cast operator and the process is called type casting. Okay. So now I have done what over here? I have casted D to data type char. But just tell me one thing, had it been only D plus L, this is L by the way, had it been only D plus L, what would have been the data type of the result? The data type would have been double, okay, which is rule number two. But now what we have done is we have typecasted D to a character. So it has become character plus long. So now tell me which rule number will be applicable? Rule number three and the answer is long. Okay, now look at expression number 10. Pause the video and tell me and think what the answer will be. So what is the answer? See, if it would have been only S plus C, okay, then the answer would have been 
end because rule number four would have been applicable over here. But now what we have done is we have typecasted S to data type double. So this has now become double plus character. And if it is double plus character, rule number two will be applicable. And now it is double. Okay. So that was one good exercise on type conversion. Okay. I suggest you copy this exercise. So that was the entire topic of type conversion. Thank you very much.